at a time. Kathy Tischer, portrayed by Rachel. It was the year 1978, the year my husband and I moved to La Crosse. Right away, we both got jobs, but jobs didn't work the way they did now. If the boss wanted you, you were on the job the next morning. He started working at the university, and within a week, I was working at Hinchin Elementary School as a special education teacher for handicapped students. I was thrilled to be working where I was most comfortable. I had a way in working and sharing my talents with children that no one else could. After working a while part-time, we had our first child. In a short two years later, we had our second. They begged me to go full-time, and it was quite frustrating, but the position most important to me were my boys and my family life. To me, family is the most vital responsibility, and I wasn't going to let this job or any other job get in the way of my family. I love my job, and I'm not denying that, but I love my boys a hundred times more. Every family needs vacation, and we had the perfect opportunity when my kids were young. We would go to Nebraska Glacier Park every summer. We treasured these trips, and sometimes they were a challenge, but we had each other. Every summer for about 10 years, when my son still lived at home, we would go pack up to Glacier National Park and live there all summer. My husband got a job as a nature biologist in the park. It was the perfect opportunity for my whole family. We would all count all the days until summer came our way. It became a tradition. It was crazy with no phones or television, just the great outdoors and the friends from summers before. It's really important to me that everyone knows this, but not only how valuable my own immediate family is to me, but how I feel about the value of every family around me. Remembering my career brings up a time when I first started teaching. It was my first job as a handicapped teacher in Oregon. I had a love for children with special needs and a sense that those children loved me too. You could say part of my inspiration came from a father of one of my students who had Down syndrome. He always showed how appreciative he was of me. My student was six years old and his father was an author about books with special needs children. He supported me through everything and I had a lot of respect for him. I'm not sure why he chose me. I'm sure he was more than ever grateful for the help I gave to his son. He really made it clear to me that I should stick to teaching and nothing else. My mother also played a role in helping me decide that teaching would be my career. She herself was a teacher. Her coming home and preparing lessons and finding a balance between her work life and motherhood made it easier for me to understand in an early age teaching was something I could do. My mother really did make an impact on me because she helped me take me to the point where I knew it was time for me to start sharing my knowledge of teaching with other educators. I wanted them to know the right guidance and actions for handicapped kids were. I wanted to make sure every child was treated right in the community. From all my jobs, from all the people in between, I know where I've always wanted to be. It was three years ago I was offered the associate superintendent position, and I still hold that position today. It's amazing how lucky I am to have the people work with me in this job. Now with this level, new parts of my life are about to begin. Through all this, I stuck to my philosophy, to keep learning. For me to stick to my goals, I decided the best way was to get my master's degree and go farther from there. All grown up, on their own, my boys are 25 and 27. I couldn't be prouder of them, but I knew I had plenty more time to do volunteer work. I put myself into the People's Food Cup board downtown and helped add an expansion for our restaurant. This project is a great experience helping farmers and even people all over stay healthy. This is an example of how even the small, ordinary jobs or opportunities can impact and change your way of thinking. With a natural love of international work, I had to get involved. I joined the Sister City Board with China and Russia. I helped support international teacher exchanges to come to the cross and teach all around the area. One year, I met two teachers from another continent that were able to really open my eyes. It shows that every community should be exposed to new things and religions. Everything has gone great, but it hasn't ended. I never quit and already have created new goals. I would like to get involved with a new eco park that will be coming to La Crosse. I also gave a suggestion on starting an international elementary school because everyone knows how thrilled I would be with that. I could see a big change happening in La Crosse with adults and children not only from our country, but from others as well. Students at an early age could be exposed to great things and exciting new windows of opportunity. Expressing and sharing my entire life story, I want to let you know to never quit and always strive for something more. Never stop making changes in your life because even that affects someone else's life. I think the biggest thing that women have contributed is the sense of continually wanting to contribute to our community. They did this to balance the work and family life for everyone, including myself. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.